I've just heard today that, you know, the counter that you all cycle past today. Now, it's not going to be able to register everybody because about four or five folk probably passed the counter at the same time. But it registered uh, probably 2,300. So if we times that by four, that takes us to probably about 9,000. What do you reckon? <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That sounds like I'm starting a circus, but never mind. Hi, everybody. Hello. No, I'm going to do it again. I didn't hear you. Hello. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Because we're all here for the same purpose, safer cycling. Wonderful mix of people, boys, girls, mums, dads, babies, kids, everybody's here and lots of different shapes of bikes. Today, we have some of the most important people here in the country today. And I'm not talking about the politicians, of course. I'm talking about children. Because this is really what this is all about. It's about making cycling safer, not just for you and me, but for everybody. It's for getting safer cycling for folk who at the moment would love to cycle, but can't cycle. So what we've decided to do today, this is just about as much a speech as I'm going to make today, we're going to get the children to talk. So bear with me for a few seconds. Uh, we've got Daniel here who's going to speak to you. I love cycling on my bike because it's a great way to keep fit and healthy, while still playing with my friends. I love pretending to be Chris Froome, and my brother pretends to be Bradley Wiggins on my bike. The reason I want the road safer for cycling is because Many cyclists have been killed and injured on the roads by reckless drivers. I want to be able to go for a big bike ride from my house without being endangered. Trust me, if I want to go on a big bike ride, I have to go in the car with my bike and my family to find somewhere quiet. But it's all safe for us to cycle. It would be great if Scotland was like Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's normal for children to cycle to school or cycle to go and see their friends. When I am old enough to go to secondary school, the only way for me to get there is either by bus or car. The road to secondary school is very busy and you very rarely see an adult cycling and never see a child cycling on the roads. There are no paths I could use to walk or cycle on, yet the school is only a couple of miles away. If I could cycle and keep me fit and also help with pollution. Cycling is so easy to do. It should not just be for elite athletes in the Commonwealth Games or the Tour de France. It should be made easy for everyone, including children. Well done, Daniel. Written by Daniel and his mother, so well done. Okay, next up, I think it is Kyle. Hi. I love to cycle, but I can't cycle as, as, much, as much as I want because the roads aren't safe. But thanks to Ped on Polly and its supporters, you lot. <laughs> Pop exists because you want to make cycling safe and changing the thoughts of new possible cyclists from it's too risky to it's really good. The reason I support Pop is because I want to cycle. I want to cycle to the shops, I want to cycle to my friends' houses, and I want to cycle to school. I believe cycling is the future for Scotland. I felt so safe in Holland cycling, but I just don't feel like that in Scotland. But I want to feel safe in Scotland. Cycling down the Royal Mile today, I thought to myself, this is how cycling should be. There wasn't a single car on the road, but lots of cyclists, as it should be. Last year was my first year being involved with pedal and cars. I think the government should give us cyclists what we need. Cycle path separate from the pavement and road. Easy. I'll be selling bacon for donation to support pedal and cars. <laughs> so could everybody give until this week because I just give a bit of money. Thanks for listening. Well done, well done. Very well said. Next we have Catherine. Just we'll make the roads safe first, then teach kids how to use them. Let's make Scotland a cycle-friendly country. <laughs> well, I think we'll all agree, I think the kids probably do better speeches than the rest of us, yeah? 
Okay, hold on. Uh, so, next up, we have the Minister for Transport, Keith Brown. Hey, thank you very much. Can I congratulate, first of all, the organisers of this event, a fantastic event, one of, uh, I would say, the biggest demonstrations we've had outside the Parliament here. I understand, of course, there's a great deal of organisation has to go into this by a number of people, so to Dave and his uh, fellow organisers, well done, and thank you to you as well for coming along and making your views known. Uh, just having heard uh, Daniel and Catherine, I think there's one or two themes you could pick up on there. First of all, uh, I do think education is extremely important. We have to educate this current cohort of children coming through by some of the bikeability and other training we're doing. If we're to make sure, as we're improving the transport network, that they and their parents feel it's safer for them to cycle, we have to undertake. I'm unapologetic about the fact that we're investing in education. I think it's the right thing to do. It's not the only thing that should be done, but it is very important that we do that. Uh, the £4.5 million range yesterday was the first time we've had a cross-portfolio initiative within the Scottish Government. So that was as a result of me talking with my colleagues in environments, in schools and in sport. The money came from different portfolios. And part of that was about making sure that we refreshed the safer routes to school so that Daniel and Catherine, their parents, feel they can get to school more safely when they're cycling. Uh, and part of it was also about, especially places like Edinburgh, where you have huge numbers of students, trying to improve the ability for students to get to if this is a further and higher education in a safe way as well. The other side, and I do agree with the point, is certainly about infrastructure. And I think we are making real progress. This is the highest amount spent by any government, £32 million this year, on infrastructure. A highest 40% increase since 2007. And just one or two quick examples of that. You'll know that in Edinburgh, and Edinburgh's very much been at the forefront of infrastructure for cycling in Scotland for many years now, We've invested, along with the Council, £4.3 million to improve Leith Walk as an exemplar so that other councils around the country can see what can be done with that money to improve it, not just for cyclists, but for walkers as well, making it safe for them, well lit, uh, and safe for them if they come from, for example, Waverley Station, going down to Ocean Terminal uh, or onto Victoria Quay to do it as safe as possible. But the other side of that is much smaller councils like the council where I live, but Manager Council which has got perhaps one of the best and most complete elements of the National Cycle Network in Scotland. What you have uh, this week, we'll open the Alva to Tillicutri element of that, just talking to one or two people before I started to speak. Very impressed by that. It's a fantastic, purpose-built, segregated piece of infrastructure for cyclists and walkers. I realise, of course, we've got much further to go. Uh, and like has been mentioned already, we should have it as safe as Amsterdam. I've been to Amsterdam myself to see what happens there. We don't start from the same point as Amsterdam. They've been doing this for decades. We have to also do it in Scotland, and it will take time to do that. I would say that uh, Scotland is different from Amsterdam in a number of respects, but there's no reason why we can't see the same huge numbers of cyclists travelling on the, the roads. And the philosophy in Amsterdam, which is that the bike uh, is king and the car is the guest, is a very strong philosophy for us to take here. But in order to do that, we have to affect driver behaviour as well. And that's why I believe... Uh, the elements of money we are spending on making sure people change the culture is extremely important. Whether it's give me cycle space, the nice way code, which I know some people have criticised, I'm unapologetic for that. It's simply the case on these social uh, marketing initiatives, whether in the past it was drink driving or whether it was using a seatbelt. These things take time to change the behaviour of drivers and I think it's extremely important that we do that. It's not as tangible uh, right away because it takes time, but it's very important. And the bottom line, and I think having spoken to uh, Mrs McNichol, who you'll hear from shortly, who's obviously been bereaved as well in terms of cycle deaths. We have to get the cycle deaths down. I understand that point. We have to have the same ambition as the Scandinavian countries to drive towards zero cycle deaths. And of course, a byproduct of that is that far more people will cycle. As has been mentioned by some of the children here today as well, the health benefits of that are huge, which is why we I started. Uh, we have the health minister involved in this as well. One last thing to say, the transport projects, two very big transport projects, the A9 and the A96. At the same time as we're looking at the dueling of those roads to make them safer, we're also setting up groups, the Sustrans and other cycling groups, to make sure that we have the active travel option right alongside those major roads. Because apart from recreational cycling, which is extremely important, people are very committed cyclists, we want to encourage tourist cycling as well. And what would surprise many people is the extent of uh, cycling commuting that goes on currently along the length of the A9. So if we have a company, for example, looking after maintaining the A9, the road itself, 
high to tech company will also look after the active cycling option as well, so it doesn't fall into disrepair. This government is extremely committed to active travel. We've committed more than any previous government, but I perfectly understand there is more to do. And listening to you, working with you, I'm sure we can achieve that together. Thank you. Okay, next up today we have Len McNichol, who's going to speak to us. Now, Len runs a charity, uh, Andrew Cyclist, and uh, it's good to give as well. She does a lot of good charity work, but as well as that, unfortunately, Lynn's here with a sad story, so I'll let Lynn talk to you today. Thanks, Dave. Wow. I mean, just this is just incredible. I was here um, at the first pedal in Parliament two years ago, and to see so many more people attending today is fantastic. And all credit to Dave and the POP team for doing so. Over the past week on social media, yes, please do, come on, big cheer for the team, they're all here. Over the past week, though, on social media, there's been some talk about why I support Pedal in Parliament. And I saw that David put down that he supports Pedal in Parliament for his children. And we've heard from the children, and actually I'd rather have spoken before the children than after them because they were so good. In fact, actually you didn't need anyone else after the children because they said it all for us. But Sally put down that she was supporting Pedal in Parliament to save the planet. Now I care about both of those things, but I'm here supporting Pedal in Parliament for a much sadder reason, a reason I wish I wasn't. And that's because on the 5th of January 2012, my stepson Andrew was killed on the Lanark Road um, cycling to work. I don't want anyone else to feel the feelings that we had on that day and to have the feelings that we have every day since then. The pain never goes away from you. It just doesn't, as I'm sure anyone who's bereaved will know. And I just don't want that. And that's why we support Pedal on Parliament. Um, I'm delighted to see so many people, but I've got something I want to ask you to do. I want you to go home from here, Google find your MSP, find your councillor. I want you to write to them. I want you to say thank you if they are here, and there are a great many here. So please do say thank you to them for supporting us. There are more here than we've had before. So thank, thank them. But I also want you to speak to the ones that aren't here. I want you to say to them, do you know about Pedal in Parliament and its manifesto? If you don't, tell them about it. Let's get more support. Let's get more MSPs, more councillors supporting what they're doing. Let's make this country safer. That's all I want to do. I don't want anyone else to go through what we and other families who are here today have done. So listen, just have a great day. It's a lovely it's not raining, so that's lovely it's okay, in Scotland. Okay. And thank you all for your support. Thank you very much, Lynn. Very much appreciated. And I'd like to say a personal thanks to Lynn because they do support us with uh, money. And in fact, the speaker system here today is on behalf of them. So thank you very much for that. Next up, we have Alison Johnson from the Green Party. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, I too would like to thank Daniel, Catherine and Kyle. What a great way to kick off this event. Who was here for the first pedal on Parliament? How many of you were here last year? And how many of you are here for the first time? Yay! You know, this is a growing movement, and what strikes me every year, it, this is not a niche activity, this is mainstream. Here we are, young, old, fit, not so fit. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, husbands, we're all here. We're just normal people who quite like to get about a bit more safely on our bikes and walking. So we're here because we want more government investment, don't we? Yay! Now, I appreciate everything the Transport Minister is doing um, and obviously with you I'm going to encourage him to carry on in the same vein. This is Pedal on Parliament 3 and wouldn't it be wonderful if one day when cycle and walking investment in this country 
is really meaningful. It's transformed our streets. It's made it safe for all our children and even our grandparents to be walking and cycling about. When that happens, when the investment is enough, let's all get on our bikes, let's walk down here and let's have party on Parliament. <laughs> just, just a few questions. Does cycling cut congestion and ease pollution on our streets? Yes! Will cycling help us to address our woeful national health record? Yes! Will cycling help us cut climate change emissions and meet the rightly ambitious targets this government has? Yes! So what's not to like? <laughs> Yay! Nothing at all. Nothing at all. You know, I don't want to have to, I mean, I love you all and I'm really proud to be a part of this movement, but we shouldn't have to come down here year on year and ask for investment in sheer common sense. This is a solution. Investing in cycling, in walking, in better streets, in safer roads is a solution to so many of the challenges we face, whether it's obesity, Think about all the hundreds of Scots, hundreds of thousands of Scots who don't have access to a car, who don't want to have to rely on a car. Think of all the Scots who find it difficult to afford bus fares for themselves and their families. This is a transport justice issue too. Perhaps this just seems too simple to be, you know, a really sensible solution, but it isn't. It really isn't. And I cannot thank you all enough for coming here year on year to help you know, build on the fantastic organisation of Pedal on Parliament, of Spokes and all the many grassroots organisations who support this movement. Mr Fife, the McNichols, you know, they are here because they demonstrate what can happen when we don't invest enough and what could change if we would only get our acts together. I do want to end on a very, very positive note, so I'd just like to thank all those who've organised this event I will come here every year until I see the situation change in Scotland for the better. Um, thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much, Alison. Very good. Next up, we have Willie Rennie from the Lib Dems. I don't know if I get any special brownie points for being the only politician who has got lycra on this morning. <laughs> but Liberal Democrats will look for any positive point to get an audience on site. Thank you for coming today. I want to give a special shout out to the Medes Bike Club, who were here earlier on. Certainly I saw some of them go off into the distance. My son is a member of the Medes Bike Club up in Fife. And this morning, when I was leaving the house, he was very jealous that I was going off to take part in this bike ride. Perhaps I'll bring him next year now that I see that so many children are here. He went back to play on his Xbox. And I was thinking as I was cycling up Queen's Ferry Road on my bike, there could not be any more a thrilling experience than going up Queen's Ferry Road on my bike. It's not perhaps an experience I would want my son to take part in, because it is nerve-wracking. I used to cycle out quite regularly back and forward to Fife into the city of Edinburgh. And there have been a few close shaves during that time. It needs to be far, far safer than it currently is. And after having experienced it directly again today, this shows why this event is critically important, that we invest even more in cycling. I welcome the investment that Keith is making. But it is not enough. We need to do so much more. If every politician was to experience what you have experienced today, cycling into Edinburgh, perhaps the budget would be a little bit bigger. I think it would be a lot bigger than it is. I see Andrew Burns here from uh, the City of Edinburgh Council, the leader here. And I know that Edinburgh are doing a great job uh, gradually increasing as a guaranteed percentage of the transport budget from 5% to 6% to 7%. Every council across Scotland needs to be doing the same. If we get a guaranteed percentage, we can make real progress. 
I have my one of my favourite books here, which is called Crap Cycle Lanes. <laughs> and it's the 50 worst cycle lanes in Britain. This should be required reading for every single roads engineer in the country. It is actually quite humorous, but it has got a very serious side as well. We need to invest so much more in transport, in active transport. And with your support today and every year from now on, I know we can achieve that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I must admit, I do wonder whether we should be passing that book on to all the MSPs, but uh, never mind. Uh, next up is Claudia Beamish from Labour. Hi everybody, um, it's really exciting for me as a vulnerable urban, urban road user as a cyclist who has lived in rural Lanarkshire for 20 years and has... Um, I, I'm a really a rural cycler but I have tried and um, to become an urban cyclist and I understand now uh, personally how terrifying that is and I actually get off when I've cycled along the edge of the Union Canal, which I haven't yet fallen into, but um, and I actually get get to the point where I'm at Tall Cross, I get off and I walk, and then I go across the meadows, and then I get off and walk again. And this sort of situation is really unacceptable. And it goes beyond party politics. I will take back a message from today to my party. But as you can see, it's all the parties in the Scottish Parliament who believe that we have to have transformational change. And as a Shadow Minister for Environment and Climate Change, I'm passionate about transformational change for that reason. But really, today, it is about safety. And I also make a commitment today to go back to my party and raise the issue of presumed liability, which I know a steering group has been formed for this week, and to really push this with my party. And I make a commitment, and I know that um, the Scottish Government is looking at what's happening in other countries for that, I just got back from holiday in France, where of course there's a lot of cycling, but there's been strict liability for there for, for years, and people just take that as a matter of course, and quite right that is. So that is really important. I want to say something as well about local authorities. Willie Rennie's already mentioned Edinburgh and the work that's been done there, and there's Glasgow, where we even have a cycling czar now in Councillor Frank McAviti, and that's important as well. But it is really important, and I want to emphasize that today to the Minister, but it's not just about the infrastructure, as being stressed to me by Councillor Leslie Hines from Edinburgh. It is also about how these new cycling routes are designed. We must have off-road, off segregated cycle routes next to the roads, and not just a line on the road. That's not good enough for any of us. As an ex-teacher, I want to say as well that I do believe very passionately in um, the cycling proficiency, but I, I am convinced now that it must be on-road cycling for young people and for children. And we heard from the children today their nervousness, just like mine and all of us here, about going on our roads, whether they're urban or rural. And I really believe very strongly that it's about education. But of course, it's not just education for cyclists, it's education for all road users. And I really begin to wonder whether we should actually have something more robust within the driving test for vehicle drivers to actually say, just think about the vulnerability of people who are not in a killer machine. And it's as simple as that. So those issues are important as well. Um, our Shadow Minister for Transport, Mark Griffin, actually had constituency events today, but he said that um, he is supportive of the eight manifesto points in your manifesto for Pedal on Parliament. And uh, there's also other MSPs from Scottish Labour and other, others as well here today. Let's hope that, as Alison Johnson says, that this will be a party another time. We've got Sarah Boyack from Scottish Labour, we've got Kez Dugdale, we've got Cara who's come down from Fife, Cara Hilton, probably others as well, and, and other MSPs from other parties. But this is about, as I started by saying, transformational change that all the parties must 
buy into in their next manifestos. And the way that you can do that is go back and say to your MSPs, especially the ones who haven't been able to get here today, or don't make it a priority, of which there are still some, that this really matters, and it's about a good quality of life for the whole of Scotland, urban and rural. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last politician today, uh, it's Cameron Rose from the Conservative Party. Thank you for your welcome. I recall last year when I spoke, when I was announced as a Conservative, there were a number of people who booed there. Thank you that the stereotypes that you have have uh, moved on. I'm an optimist. I'm an opt well, well, I have to be if I'm a Conservative in Scotland, of course. Um, I'm an optimist. And I, I, do you know what? I think there is, there is a lot that we need to do and a lot of progress that we need to look for and we need to make. But I do think we need to celebrate and be thankful for the progress which has been made. And I think we need to give credit to some of the things that Keith Brown said. Uh, we've already talked about what Edinburgh Council has done and we as Conservatives have very much been supporting the progress that there has been within Edinburgh. And indeed, as, as Conservatives, um, uh, some people have, have, have this stereotype, but uh, I think was it last year I mentioned Boris Johnson, I saw a figure uh, for the London investment in cycling, which is more than double of that in Scotland per person, per head. And so if you do have that stereotype, I wonder if I could just uh, uh, try and encourage you to move on from that stereotype. I personally have uh, been cycling pretty well all my life. I'm a 1,500 to 2,000 a year person just round about the centre of the city and I do it for loads of reasons. I do it to keep fit. Uh, I do it because it's convenient. I do it because it's cheap. Uh, it's, it's healthy. And there are all sorts of reasons that we need to move on from where we are today. But I think we have to give credit for where we've come from and to recognise that there's progress. And I do think we also have to recognise that not everybody is going to be a cyclist that there are some people who will not be, and that we must be realistic as we move on step by step, uh, as, as we reach for much better circumstances and conditions for cyclists. And I think it was Catherine here who said, I want it to be good for cycling. I want it to be good to cycle. And so do I. And I think there's lots of potential for us to pursue that further and to go further down this particular route. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. So we want one more speaker today, and then we'll be wrapping up. We've got Christopher Oliver, Chris Oliver from Roadshare. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've just taken over the chairmanship of Roadshare with Brenda Mitchell, and we pulled a working group together, and we met this week, and we're writing a strategy for presumed liability. It's a big ask. A lot of people just don't quite get it, and the people that get it, they really get it, and they understand it. We've been asked for evidence from the Scottish Government and we're looking at that and I think the evidence is going to be difficult to produce because it's a whole change of mindset and a whole change of culture that occurred in countries like France and uh, Amsterdam and Scandinavia where they have presumed liability. But we're a responsible country and we need to protect the vulnerable road user, uh, the vulnerable cyclist, the vulnerable pedestrians it's not just about cyclists it's a big ask it's a lot to think about so what i would like you to do is to have a careful think about your views on presumed liability and let us know we've got a twitter feed at roadshare we've got a facebook page please come along and like us and join us and help us with this because this is going to be a massive flotilla that we need to get together to make presumed liability work in scotland so please support me thank you Thank you very much, Chris. Well, you'll be glad to know, guys, that's has just about reached the end of today. There's only a few things left to do, and one of those is I need to say thank you to a number of different people. First of all, I'd like to thank the other organisers of Pedlam Parliament, because I'm the one who's willing to stand up here and look daft in a kilt wearing lycra underneath and say silly things. But I can assure you I'm not the one that does all the work. The folk in pop know exactly who they are and who the ones that are doing the work, so please... Give a huge cheer to the pop team. I'm sure you deserve that. It's brilliant work. I'm working with them. Very lucky. 
Um, but pop doesn't happen just because of a group of about eight or seven, seven or eight cyclists. Pop happens because there's a lot of volunteers who do a lot of work. They give out leaflets in the pouring rain. They, I don't know, they, they send out tweets, they write letters to people. They organize things like the speakers and banners and it just goes on and on. There are so many volunteers that help us out and they need an absolutely huge cheer. Thank you very much guys, let's give them a cheer. I did it earlier on because I knew most of them would be going away by now, but today would not have happened without the help of the police. The police did a fabulous job. So I'd like to say thank you to the police for helping us and making the road safe for us today. <laughs> I'd like to thank the council because they were the ones that agreed to close the roads for us. So we're very grateful for that because it made it very safe for large groups of us to go down today. So thank you very much to Edinburgh Council. really what pop is all about in the end is getting the message through to the politicians and you can see a lot of politicians came here today and it shows we're making significant progress and that's down to you guys turning up and, and making a lot of noise but what we should do is be very thankful for all the politicians even those we don't necessarily all agree with because they are listening and they're taking it on board so I'd like to thank you guys for coming along today thank you very much I am absolutely certain I'll have forgotten somebody. I'm hoping that somebody might wave in case there's anyone I'm forgetting. But the most important people to thank are you guys. It was you today that made the spectacle. It's you that will have got this hopefully onto the news tonight and in the papers tomorrow. It would not happen without you guys. So please keep doing what you're doing. Keep coming along to pop. It ain't finished this year. It's going to be on next year. I say that thinking we're going to have to organise it again. But Thank you for coming. Keep writing to your MSPs. That is really important. That makes a difference. Look at the leaflets we gave you out today. They say the different things that you can do. Please, please, please keep up what you're doing. Thank you very much. So remember guys, what this is all about. It's not about people in Lycra. It's not about people dressing up, looking, you know, making special efforts to go cycling. This is all about making cycling safe for everyone. Because remember, as we said last year, we are everyone. Thank you very much and have a safe journey home. Thank you.